after discussing inductive and electromagnetic effect, we pass on to the next part, resonance. Now, whenever we discuss about resonance, resonance basically means delocalization of electron cloud in a molecule. Now, to understand what is delocalization, first of all, let us take a system having C double bond C, again, alternately C double bond C. Now, whenever a double bond is formed, a double bond is basically formed by overlap of P orbitals, or to be more specific, PZ orbitals. So, here we have one PZ orbital with the electron. Here we have one PZ. In fact, each of the carbons are sp2, so each of them has a pz orbital. Now, it so happens that this carbon, if I call it as carbon number 1 and this 4, 2 and 3, 1 and 2 has undergone a side overlap to form a pi bond over here. Similarly, 3 and 4 has undergone a side overlap to form a bond between 3 and 4. But it may so happen the next day that for overlap, you need to have two parallel orbitals. So, it may so happen the next day that instead of 1 getting coupled with 2, 2 and 3 may undergo a side overlap. And if 2 and 3 undergo a side overlap, then C1, C2 bond will be single. C2 and C3 bond will be double. With one electron over left over here and one left over here. That means if we look at this structure as the bonds were in conjugation, hence we can say the position of the double bond is not fixed. Sometimes it is between 1, 2. Sometimes it is between 2, 3. Sometimes it is between 3, 4. That means we can say the position of the double bond in this molecule is not stationary. It is moving or getting delocalized. And as electron cloud is a negative charge, so we can say the more the delocalization, the more will be the stability. Let us look at another example that will give you a more clear picture. That is our very famous compound, benzene. If we look at benzene, benzene has sp2 hybridization with all these orbitals lying exactly perpendicular to the plane and coplanar with each other. Now, in this case, each of the orbitals has an electron. So, there is a chance of side overlap. So, if I number it for your own purpose, safety, that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there can be an overlap between 1 and 2 between 3 and 4, and between 5 and 6. So, resultantly we have the pi bonds in these positions. On the other hand, as overlap involves nearby orbitals, so tomorrow it may so happen that 2 instead of overlapping with 1 may choose 3, because while overlap it should be adjacent. So, therefore 3 will leave 4 4 will choose 5, 6 will choose 1. Then what will happen? Again, we'll have a ring. But look at the position of the pi bonds. It will be here, here, and here. So if I name it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, in the first picture, the bond was between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here it is between 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 6. So we can clearly say from these two pictures that in benzene, the position of the double bond is not fixed. So, in a very loose language, we can say it is in a rotating condition. It's not rotating actually. It is getting delocalized. And if I show the delocalization by this kind of arrow, you can see the position of the double bond. The double bond will come across here, here, and here, which is shown. So, as delocalization involves moving of electron cloud from one part to the other, a part of a molecule, and therefore we can say higher is the delocalization the higher will be the stability. And this delocalization results in extraordinary stability of benzene ring. And therefore, we can say any system which undergoes delocalization will impart more stability. And the amount of energy by which benzene becomes more stable is called as your resonance energy. We will come to this term lateral also. So, we can clearly see whenever a system is in conjugation, that means to exhibit this delocalization or resonance, it was only becoming possible 
because if you look at it, the pi bond from here was migrating here. This was migrating here. And therefore, we have this structure C plus double bond coming here, C minus. And if you draw it the other way around, C minus, this pi bond will break. You can arrive at this structure. But remember, resonating structures or resonance is a hypothetical state of chemical entity in which the electronic structure can be hypothetically represented by two or more Lewis structure differing in distribution of electron. And the different structures that we draw are known as resonating structures. Now, as we have discussed the resonating structure or resonance, which is nothing but a delocalization of electron, first of all, we have an idea how to write the resonating structures. Let us look at this example, CH2, double bond, CH, with double bond, CH2. The example of 1,3-butadiene, which I have just discussed right now. Here, if you look at it, Actually, while I'm resonating, the pi bond position should change. That means we can convert lone pairs to pi bonds or pi bonds to lone pairs. So basically what happens, the pi bond first breaks in this direction. So this becomes negative. Agar usko double bond yaha pe banana hai, so this carbon has to become positive and therefore this pi bond should break. So schematically what we do, while showing it like this, we show it in this fashion. with the arrow over here. That means the pi bond is migrating, this is breaking. So, these two structures which I have drawn are known as the canonical structure or resonance hybrid. Of these two forms, while representing the molecule in a hypothetical state, we must draw the picture of only one molecule. That means, of these two structures, the structure which is more contributory should be represented and the structure which has got less contribution should not be represented. So the next part that comes, how to judge that which structure has got more contribution and which structure has got less contribution. To understand this thing in great details, we have to formulate certain mechanisms which will enable us to guide how we should judge the contributory structure. The first point that comes the most relevant among them is structures which are uncharged, that means which are neutral, have always a higher contribution. For example, the molecule which I have shown you, 1,3-butadiene, here if we undergo resonance, the pi bond is going to come over here, this is going to break. So the next canonical structure we are getting is CH2 plus CH double bond CH CH2 minus. So here if you look at it, here this carbon is in minus state, charge this is in plus state. But this is a neutral compound and hence as per the policy or discuss point, uncharged structures have got a higher contribution. Now the second question comes, if I have charged structures, then how should I decide which structure has got more dominance. To answer that, let us take an example where we are involving some charge structures. For example, we have this molecule. In this, there is a lone pair. Suppose the lone pair is undergoing this resonance. So this pi bond should break. Now, when I draw canonical structure, I am not, I am not supposed to change the skeleton of a molecule. That means CO2 cannot be represented as OOC. It should be OCO. Number one. Number two, during drawing the canonical structures, lone pairs should be converted to pi bonds and pi bonds should be into lone pairs. So the first structure that I will get will have O minus single bond. This is one of the structures a student has written. Secondly, somebody may write like this.